namo bhagavate vasudevaya from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 5, entitled The Meeting of Nanda Maharaj and Vasudeva, Text 24. In this section of Srimad Bhagavatam, we have heard from Srila Shukadeva Goswami about the joyous celebration of Krishna's appearance in this world in Gokul Mahaban as Nanda Maharaj Yashoda and all the Brijabhasis celebrate Krishna's appearance. They do not know he is God, but they love him more than God because he's Krishna. Krishna completely captured their hearts even before he took birth. They were in so much longing and expectation for Krishna's appearance. And that feeling of separation And then the, after the Brijabhasis were in great pain that Nanda and Yashoda had no children. It was Krishna's will to be their child. So Nanda, Yashoda, and the Brijabhasis were in deep pains of separation from someone they didn't even know. When Yashoda Mai became pregnant, the imminent arrival of this child put them in even more intensified state of love. And ultimately when Krishna appeared in this little infant form, everyone surrendered their minds, bodies, their, their souls in love to Gopal. This is the beauty of Vrindavan. How could you love anyone more than God? In one sense, it's impossible to love anyone more than God. But in Vrindavan, it is possible. Because their conception of God is Narayan, the supreme, all-powerful, absolute truth. And they loved him with all their hearts and souls. And Krishna is Narayan himself. Krishna is the supreme absolute truth who has descended from Goloka. Narayan is all powerful. Krishna was just a tiny little helpless looking baby. But they loved him so much, even more than Narayan. We can imagine the celebration. It's a celebration of the heart, not just a formality or a ritual. When they were throwing butter on each other and putting turmeric on the cows, dancing and singing with all different musicians, everything was coming from the very core of the love of their heart as an expression of their happiness that Krishna had come. Sukadeva Goswami is taking us on such a journey in this Srimad Bhagavatam. First, our hearts are being broken and our hearts are being elated beyond limits. We're reading about Vasudeva and Devaki, how they're being tortured and they're great devotees. 
when we, when we hear about devotees suffering, it makes us suffer. But they were suffering for Krishna. All their children being murdered. And a few pages later, there's the most joyous festival in all of history, Nandotsav. And just the day after Nandotsav, Nanda Maharaj has to go to meet Kamsa. <laughs> of course, he didn't have to directly meet Pam Kamsa, but he had to pay taxes. And while he was there, in this chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, we read Vasudev. Vasudev comes to see Nanda Maharaj. It was that little window opening where Vasudev wasn't in jail. Yes. He was going to get put in jail again a couple days later. <laughs> but he, that Tuta Yogamaya's influence, Kamsa became sober for a few days, and he became a little kind-hearted, if you could call him that. And he apologized to Vasudev and Devaki and said, yes, you, I'm sorry, you, you are free now. But due to bad association, he changed his mind. But by Krishna's grace, during that little window of opportunity where he was free, Nanda Maharaj came to pay taxes. Vasudev came to see him. And the meeting of these two cousin brothers is being described here in, in its intimacy and in its depth of love for each other that they had. It is an important element of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita and all of our bhakti scriptures. How love of God manifests as deep love for devotees among each other. And deep love in the form of compassion that a devotee has for all beings. The day before, he's celebrating his love for Krishna. And on this day, Vasudeva and Devaki are celebrating their love for each other as brothers. And then sometimes we take our relationships for granted because that's the nature of Maya is things that are very important and precious. She covers our understanding of their value so that she can distract us to put our attention and get absorbed in things that really have no value at all. Yes, our, our jobs, our occupations, our property, all of these material things that we put so much of our heart and lives absorption in from a spiritual perspective from an eternal perspective they have zero value their only value really from a spiritual perspective is to what extent they could be used in devotional service for the pleasure of Krishna but they really can only be properly used in devotional service if we're absorbed in Krishna. So tendency is, if Maya Devi allowed us to understand the value of our relationships with other devotees, our relationships with Krishna, then she could have no hold on us. So one of her primary strategies is even though philosophically, theoretically we may understand the value of association of devotees it becomes 
covered, because it's always there. But what about this? This association is always there. I could always chant my rounds. I could always come to the temple. I could always do this. But this is a once in a lifetime opportunity I have here. Maya Devi will provide unlimited once of a lifetime opportunities for the rest of eternity. That is how she works and we think each one is so special. And yet the chance to serve and to have darshan and to pray and to be with Vaishnavas, that we could do any time. But this is very special. Moment by moment she distracts us. Vasudev, separation makes, separation gives us a sense of something's value. When we lose something or we don't have something, we have more of an opportunity to meditate on its value. So imagine what Vasudev and Devaki went through for year after year after year, they had no association with any devotees. They were in prison. Their only association was with Kamsa and Kamsa's followers who were cruel, evil demons. It's the jail guards and like that. It was Kamsa culture all around them wasn't bhakti culture. The whole scene around Kamsa was full of anger and envy, lust, and greed. Imagine Kamsa. He imprisoned his own father so that he could take his wealth away from him and his power. And to keep his power, he was willing to murder his own sister and when he somehow or other understood she wasn't a danger to him, he murdered his own nephews. He was about to murder his own niece. This is the environment of anger and envy and arrogance that Vasudev and Devaki were living in. And here he gets out and he comes to see his very, very best friend, Nanda Maharaj. And how much he is appreciating that association. He's expressing his heart that these moments of association with you is like my taking another birth. kind of is, because the womb is like a prison. You can't really go anywhere. It's not much light. And when you get out of the womb, it's, it's like getting out of a little prison. You can move around, you can see people, you can interact with people. You know, it's interesting. When a baby's in the womb of a mother, when the baby comes out, the baby's really interacting with the mother immediately with loving relation. But when the baby's in the mother's womb, the mother's doing everything for the baby. And the mother, is, from what I've seen and heard, sometimes the mother really has to suffer to keep that baby, you know, to take, keep that baby in her womb, get sick, all kinds of inconveniences, limitations, and the process of giving birth is oftentimes excruciating pain. So the mother's doing all for the baby. The baby doesn't even, in the womb, she, the baby doesn't even know what or who she is. The baby doesn't know what's going on. It's just like in this dark little cell. It's quite interesting. Mother's doing everything and the baby doesn't even know what she is, who she is. 
So the baby's not reciprocating. The mother's giving everything, no reciprocation. And when it comes out, the baby sees the mother and understands, I need your milk, but at least recognizes who's getting it from. So it's inside, but doesn't know anything about the person. Closest thing. Not only close, but inside you, and they <laughs> doesn't even appreciate. So Vasudeva is giving this example. And seeing you is like taking birth, being released from the womb of the prison of all this suffering, and now being with my friend. In the Vaishnav or Vedic perception, when we take initiation, it's called second birth. In the Christian conception, when you accept Jesus as your savior in your life, it's called being born again. So this conception of connecting with God is Initiation is connecting with God. Taking the Gayatri Mantra is a very, very deep connection with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So it's a second birth. It's actually our birth. Diksha is like being born again. It is. But here we find this extends to devotees by having the association of devotees. It's like being born again. We shouldn't take it for granted. To the degree we actually appreciate and are grateful for the good fortune that Krishna gives us, we could actually benefit from that good fortune. You can eat nutritious food, but if you're not able to digest it, and there's very little um, benefit from that food. If you can digest it, you get all the benefits. Similarly, when we come before the deities, when we chant the holy names, when we come in this association of devotees especially, if we understand how important it is to us, if we, if we recognize what an inconceivable gift of God it is, then we'll be grateful. And then we can actually benefit from that association to that extent. A grateful heart is a heart that could actually absorb, assimilate Krishna's grace in the many forms it takes, especially in the form of a devotee's association. first offense to the holy name is to blaspheme devotees, to not appreciate the devotees. The number one offense to Krishna in his most munificent, merciful manifestation of the holy name. That means we cannot please Krishna if we do not appreciate his devotees. because it's not what he wants. Mad bhakta pujab yadika. Worship of my devotees is more dear to me than worship of me. That is Krishna's work. So why did Krishna take birth? Why did he appear in his original transcendental form, something he only does once every eight billion, four hundred million years? comes in his original form of Krishna from Goloka. And here he appears simultaneously as the sons of Nanda Maharaj and Vasudev. Why did he appear to them? This is an example of the quality of these great souls. They had such appreciation and love for each other, for the devotees of the Lord.
And Vasudev says, even though one is present in this world, to meet with intimate friends and dear relatives in this material world is extremely difficult. From a perspective of Vasudev have been in prison with Kamsha and not having any association of devotees, from that perspective we can understand how difficult it is to get the association of devotees. But Vasudeva is not just talking about himself. He's actually talking about it as a principle, as a reality of life. This is very important because we think that association of friends and association with intimate relatives, maybe for Vasudev, he was in prison, but for us, we see it every day. Because in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the Paramahamsa Samhita, when we're talking about friends and intimate relatives, it means friends and intimate relatives that really have a spiritual foundation, not just something mundane. It's actually extremely rare. Durlabhamana bhajanma. How rare it is to take human birth. If we see things from a broad perspective, we can appreciate. If we see things from the perspective of where we're standing right now, blinded to the reality of where we're coming from and, and the, how the whole universe is working around us, then we can appreciate how rare a fortune we may be having. Yes, brahmacharis living in an ashram, kind of overcrowded. Sometimes rats crawl around you and you have to deal with so many other devotees, not as much privacy as you may like. And sometimes you think, God, you know, it's, it's, what's so great about all these devotees all over the place? But what should be recognized is it has probably taken you millions and millions and millions of births without the association of devotees to somehow or other get this chance. And considering millions and millions of births, that means tens and millions. Because in previous yugas, you lived to 100,000 years. So that's one birth. <laughs> huh? And Satya Yuga is longer than Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga, you, you know, Treta Yuga, you lived, you know, other Yugas, 10,000 years. That's one birth. So when we talk about millions and millions of births, that means a lot of years. Maybe hundreds of millions of years it's taken to get this association of devotees. And how long is this lifetime? like a little flash, it's a spark. It's like in Diwali, we have these fireworks. They just go <laughs> That's what life is, when we perceive it from a broad perspective. Out of all the births and deaths we've had, it's just, it's just <laughs> Fireworks. They go in the sky and they make a thing. That's that's life, as they say. Now the little the little firework as he's going up, he's thinking, Oh, this is when am I gonna get to the top? Seems like forever. But in reality, it's a flash. 
Well, yes, we have this opportunity of association of devotees. We're so much in the moment, we're, we're not appreciating really what it is and how long it has taken to get this association and how quickly it's going to be taken away. And people in the congregation, yes, we have our work, but work, every birth we have work. It's nothing rare about working to get for eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. Sex life, rare opportunity. You know, the monkeys, the hogs, the cockroaches. And to give some little more um, respect, the peacocks and the, <laughs> and the beautiful green parrots. It's not that only the ugly animals have sex. <laughs> Every birth you take, you're having sex. What? It's not such a rare thing, such a precious thing. It's every species of life, that's what they do. They, they eat, they sleep, they work for money. You know, the, the cockroaches, what's their job? To somehow or other find some food, wherever it may be. They're working hard. The ants are building hills. Everybody was working for somehow or other for survival. Everyone's having sex and everyone's going to sleep. Every birth, it's nothing rare. Sensual enjoyment, you know, everyone's doing that. Nothing rare about that. But Maya makes it appear that this particular enjoyment is something so special and something so rare. But that's what every species of life is thinking. Yes? When the female cockroach sees a male with a nice mustache. <laughs> She's thinking, when will I ever get this chance again? But it's, kind of ever, it's all over the place. So the human form of life is extremely rare. There's 8,400,000 species. 400,000 are different types of humans. But 8 million species, usually for, oftentimes you have to transmigrate through eight million forms to get to this human life. And then only is there the opportunity for spiritual advancement. It's very rare. And what is the rarest, most precious thing in human life? Durlabha manava janama satsangi taraha epavos sindhuri. The rarest thing is the association of devotees. It's taken so long. This association is the door opening to liberation, to Prem Bhakti. But because it's kind of all around us at the present moment, we just take it for, so for granted. We don't really understand, appreciate, or take advantage of its value. But the reality is at any moment it could be taken away. Padam padam yadvi padam natesha. And if we don't take advantage of it, if we don't appreciate it, just to teach us a good lesson, we may not have it again for many, many births. It's not automatic. Now I'm a devotee, so every birth I'll take, I'll get devotee association. It's not like that. You never lose your spiritual life, but Krishna will do what's best for you. You didn't appreciate the association this life. Maybe a hundred more lives till you get it again. Bharat Maharaj, he had to become a deer to appreciate it. Or if Krishna's really specially merciful to us, 
he may really crush us so that we actually do appreciate it. That crushing is grace. Because Krishna is seeing from the perspective of the eternal soul in every situation. We're seeing in terms of our physical sufferings and enjoyments at the moment. So there's a very different vision between Krishna's vision of our life, of our existence, and our own. We're just struggling for the moment, and Krishna's seeing us as eternal souls trying to bring us back to Godhead. If it takes a hundred million years to bring us back, Krishna's going to plan it out to give us a chance. But he wants us to come back in this lifetime. So it is very precious to have relatives who are intimate, who share our devotion to God, to have friends who share our devotion to God. It is, in fact, the rarest, most precious thing in all of existence. And if we understand how rare and precious it is, then we could easily forgive each other for our mistakes or our differences and everything else. But if we don't understand its value, then we're going to focus more on the, the very insignificant, superficial, mundane aspects of the association we have with devotees. rather than the spiritual blessing that we have in the association of devotees. Srila Prabhupada said, if you can show your love for me by how you cooperate with each other. Krishna told the Prachetas, I am giving you my darshan, and giving you all blessings because of your loving friendship with each other. This is a principle that we find here. The two fathers of Krishna, they don't know he's God, but they love him even better than God. And they love each other. And they're so eager to see each other, and so eager to serve each other, and they have so much trust in each other. Devaki's in prison, Rohini's present, pregnant with a child. Vasudev, out of his love, because he had such intense trust in Nanda Maharaj, he sent Rohini to live with him. And Nanda Maharaj was taking a risk. We understand Srimad Bhagavatam from a sociological perspective. Vasudev's wife is Rohini. Kamsa knows that Rohini is Vasudev's wife. Kamsa knows all this stuff. He's a relative himself. He's the brother-in-law of Vasudev. And he has spies everywhere. So for Nanda Maharaj to accept Rohini and take care of her kind of puts him in an awkward position. You know, he has to go and pay his taxes to Kamsa out of fear that Kamsa, if he doesn't pay taxes to Kamsa, it's not that Kamsa was using his taxes like you to steer Maharaj for everyone's benefit. He's just using it for his own evil purposes. So to accept Vasudev's wife and pregnant child kind of further implicates him with Vasudev. But Nanda Maharaj was willing to do it because he loved Vasudev so much. And Vasudev loved Nanda Maharaj so much he trusted him like that. 
They had such a relationship. They were family members, they were friends, they were brothers. When Krishna appeared in the prison cell and told Vasudev, bring me to Nanda Maharaj. Vasudev was not unhappy. He was just concerned with Krishna's happiness. He didn't complain. He knew that Krishna was God. <laughs> there was no um, what do you call it? No ordinary birth labor pains. She didn't have a second of labor pain. She was pregnant, and then at midnight, how did he come out? It's really amazing. He didn't like come out of some little uterus canal or anything. She's pregnant, she's big, and all of a sudden sh there's nothing inside and there he is standing in the, in the sky looking down at her, fully dressed. <laughs> with gold and jewels and four arms, weapons, conch shell, club, Lotus flower, chakra. It's not that, you know, those were his birthday presents. <laughs> nobody gave nobody gave it to him. There he was. Incredible. It was Vishnu, his worshipable Lord. As a son, finally, after all these years, you get Krishna appears. And then Krishna says, bring me over to Nanda's house. And Vasudev, he was eager. If this is what will make Krishna happy, this is my happiness. And Devaki also. Now, if Vasudev, think about it from a psychological perspective. Vasudev could have complained, God, after all this trouble, finally, you want me to take, take you over to somebody else? We did, in his previous life, he did so many years of tapasya to get God as his child. After all that tapasya and all the tapasya in this life of being put in prison, he's born and he's asked to go somewhere else. And us, an ordinary person would probably be envious of Nanda Maharaj. That Nanda Maharaj gets to play with this beautiful little boy who's the love of my heart and he gets to raise him and Yashoda Mai gets to feed him milk and, and we just sitting here in prison, we don't get anything. Yes? Could be angry at God, could be envious toward each other, but just the opposite. Vasudev loved Nanda Maharaj more than anything or anyone, even before the birth of the child, and now even more, because he was taking care of Krishna. This means the relationship between Vasudev and Nanda Maharaj was completely unselfish. There was no possibility of envy, because their conception was what will make Krishna happy. Vasudev and Devaki were not thinking what will make me happy. They were simply thinking what will make Krishna happy. And Vasudev, without telling Nanda Maharaj, actually, I brought this boy to you. He didn't want any credit. He was just asking, how is, how is this child? How is your two children? Asking about Krishna and Balaram. So their relationship was simply based on Krishna in the center. And how rare that is. The 
this morning during Srila Prabhupada's Guru Puja, Radha Kund Prabhu came and gave me a garland from Ranganath in Sri Rangam. One very well known yoga teacher with his students. Radha Kund was taking him on a pilgrimage and they gave Radha Kund this garland to bring back to give to me. So as he was putting the garland on me, I was thinking this is extremely auspicious because I'm receiving the Mahaprasad of Sri Rangam on the day of Gopal Bhatta Goswami's appearance. Which is actually our most intimate connection with Sri Rangam. So I was thinking that very special blessing, no accident. Happened to just come on this time and I don't think that Radha Kun Prabhu was planning it in this way. He was just bringing the garland and he just happened to arrive today. But it is a blessing, Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So on the subject of relationships, of appreciation and affection between Vaishnavas, we can speak something on this subject. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was on his tour of South India. Wherever he went, he was giving people Krishna. The culture of India is so beautiful. People were accepting it. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was just giving Krishna everywhere he went. Whoever he saw, he would induce them to chant Krishna's holy names. And if anybody, whoever they were, were willing to chant Krishna's names, Lord Chaitanya would become so overwhelmed with appreciation according to their particular role, because he was a sannyasi, he would embrace people and with tears of love, he would thank them for accepting Krishna. This way millions of people were becoming devotees. When he came to Sri Rangam, he took his bath in Kaveri River and went to see the very historical, ancient form of Ranganathji. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like he did at every temple, he danced and sang Kirtan, <coughs> Mahamantra, the names of Krishna. His voice was so sweet. So mystifying. Oftentimes, we read about and hear about his beautiful dancing. We should also appreciate his beautiful singing. Radha Bhava Duti Suvalitam Nomi Krishna Swarupam. Krishna comes to take.